Okay, welcome to your second set of notes. Um, today we're really going to start talking much more about um, actual historic content. And what better place to start with talking about American history than, well, Europeans first exploring the Americas. Um, you're going to see that there's really four uh, countries that lead the way. The Spanish, the Portuguese, the French, and the British. British we're not really going to talk too much today because we're going to spend basically the first half of the year talking about the British. So today we're really just going to talk about the first three. Okay, the Spanish, the Portuguese, and the French. Before we get started, guys, quick reminder, just remember, once again, make sure you're filling out your margins and the reflection. Um, main idea, guiding questions, keywords, small pictures, right? All those things can go in the margins. Make sure you're filling out all of your blanks and doing it completely because it will be on notebook check and we'll make sure you have all this, okay? Also, guys, feel free to pause, rewind, all this stuff so that you can um, hear it over and over and get what you need from this. Okay, so well, let's get started. So why explore? The big question was why did Europeans want to go out and see the rest of the world? Why didn't they just stay home? Okay, A lot of it starts way back before our curriculum talks about and it's with Marco Polo. Um, Marco Polo was an Italian, just like Mr. Pervetera, um, but he uh, traveled to China, right? He took this really long land route and you know went to China and he brought back all kinds of interesting things from China and India, right? Silk, lots of things that Europeans didn't have, different spices and things like that. Europeans loved them. They went crazy for these Asian um, novelties. So they established this trade route that went back and forth from um, the far east to Europe. Over the centuries, that trade route really kind of becomes incredibly important. And really what ends up happening is Europeans decide that they want to start um, finding faster ways to get there. Okay, because going by um, land really took a while. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't easy to go from here, right, over all this terrain. There are mountains here, all kinds of stuff, into China. It was no easy task. So, really, you're going to see the push to try to get over here using multiple different, different routes. Okay, so, large nations develop in the mid-1400s in Europe. So, this is when you get countries that first start to really establish themselves. Um, these nations help spark foreign trade. So, in order to survive, they would really have to trade with each other. So why not just trade with the country next to you? Why not look to trade much further um, down the road across the ocean? Um, the Renaissance, um, which really was a rebirth, right? There was the Dark Ages, the Middle Ages, things that you don't really need to worry too much about. But there was a rebirth, right? And things started to look up for Europeans, brighter futures, better technology and things like that. So they started to seek out new ideas and, and new customs and they actually had an interest in what was going on in other parts of the world that really wasn't there before. So it wasn't just so much about trade and spice and things like that. It was about, you know, a curiosity, a, a, a desire for knowledge. Also, guys, there was new technology, just like, you know, the next iPhone comes out. Back then, the next ship would have come out, and it would have been a little bit faster, um, and it could go further distances. Um, better maps started to develop. So, really, for the first time, people could more accurately determine where they needed to go to get there faster. Okay? Um, also, people could get their location better, so it was less dangerous. People wouldn't get lost, right? The more information you had during travel, the safer and more efficient and cost-effective it would be. Um, because of these things, Europeans really started to um, get the idea that maybe we can get to Asia to get all these good spices and things by sea instead of by land. Maybe it would be faster. All right, so just a quick little uh, comprehension check question here. Which of these um, were not one of the big four European countries to start exploring? Was it France, Germany, Spain, or Portugal? Remember, three of them were, one of them is not. Which one is not the one? I think you're going to see the answer is Germany. Germany actually wasn't even a country yet. Okay, and once again, here's the four, the four nations. Okay, 
Um, and Columbus, okay? You can't really start talk, talking about the United States without really talking about Columbus. Um, yeah, you'll see things where people say he didn't really discover America, and you know, there's a lot of truth to that. But what Columbus really did was set off the frenzy that led to all kinds of people wanting to come to um, the Americas. Columbus was telling for a long time that he wanted to, to try to get to Asia going a different way than what people had been doing in the past. Nobody would listen to him. It wasn't even that not everyone thought the world was flat. You may have heard that. A lot of scholars and smart people at the time would have known that the earth was round. But what they didn't know is how big the ocean was. So they thought, you know, you could start and, and, and go across this big ocean, but you're not going to make it. You'll run out of food. Um, he went to his home country of Italy and they said, no, we're not giving you money to do this. This is crazy. So he went to Spain and Queen Isabella of Spain says, you know what? We'll give you the ships and the money. So it took three ships, two months to reach land. Really what happened was he thought he was in a different area than he really was. So there was a little bit of confusion. He wasn't quite sure that he was in, you know, Asia. He wasn't quite sure that he was in a new land. He didn't really know. He adds three more additional trips to the Caribbean. And like I mentioned before, his discovery set off a whole frenzy of exploration. To give you a better idea, I'm going to switch to a map and I'll point some of these things out to you again. Okay, so like I said, originally Europeans really had been going um, via land, right, into Asia. But um, for a while before, um, after the Renaissance, Europeans had started to go to Europe by going around the coast of Africa. And then from there they would go to India or they would even travel through the West Indies into China. Okay, this actually is a much quicker trip. And kids are always like, well, why, why? You know, this seems much more direct. You can move a lot faster on water. You're not pulling things across land, right? You can put a lot of stuff on a ship and have the wind take it and sail it. Um, so really going around Africa was much, much quicker. What Columbus decides to do, and I'll switch a different color here, is not go around Africa. He thinks you can just go straight across this way and end up over here. Now, lots of times kids will laugh and say, well, um, duh, there's a big continent there. But nobody knew that these two continents even existed. So it really wasn't that bad of an idea for him. So what ends up happening is Columbus sets out from Spain, right? And he goes, do, 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 oops. And he lands on a bunch of islands right here. But he doesn't know that he's here. He actually thinks he's over here in these islands. These were called the, the East Indies. So really, the Caribbean islands today are sometimes called the West Indies because that's where Columbus thought he was. It's also why he, when he ran into Native Americans, he called them Indians because he thought he was someplace over here, which is relatively near India. So Columbus comes back to, to Spain and then goes back and forth a couple of times, right? And then after a while, he realizes, hmm, I am not in Asia. I am in someplace completely different. Because of this, European countries go crazy and they start exploring these two continents over here. Europeans are still interested in going to Asia, but all of a sudden there's a whole new side of the world that they had no idea even existed. All right, I want to show a quick little video, and this is from a movie, a Hollywood movie, but I think it gives a good representation of what it would have been like for Columbus when he reached um, the New World. Now keep in mind, they weren't sure exactly where they were, but they had been on a ship for months, and these are little tiny ships. So you're gonna see kind of the relief and happiness when they finally reach land in this video. So watch it, it's not too long, and then we'll continue. Oops. Here we go.
like I said, guys, keep in mind that these people haven't seen land in months. So this is probably why they're so excited, and that's why they're falling on the beach and everything. I know it's very dramatic, but it, it probably would have looked something similar to that. All right, so let's do another quick little comprehension check, right? It says, which is not a reason why European countries began to explore the globe? Marco Polo brought back riches from Asia. Europeans were looking to move due to Asian conquests. Large nations competed for trade, and the Renaissance encouraged expanding knowledge. Obviously, we know here that we didn't talk anything about um, Asian conquest, so the answer would have been B for this. Okay, another quick little video clip. This one's shorter, and it's also a little more fun, too. It's also about Columbus. Here's another 90-second history report. Did you know about Christopher Columbus? Yeah. Well, it's time to separate the fact from the myth. His real name? Cristoforo Colombo. That's Italian. Columbus is the English translation. He's not the first European to reach North America. The Vikings traveled to England about 500 years before Columbus. And most people of his day still not believe the world was flat. Actually, Aristotle said the world was round back around 350 BC. No a lot of those stories came from a book by Washington Irving, the same guy who created Rip Van Winkle and the Headless Horseman. Christopher Columbus really did believe that traveling west would be a shortcut to India, although he did know about North and South America in between. After Italy declined on funding his plan, he approached Spanish royals, Ferdinand and Isabella. Three ships later, the journey began. Over the next 10 years, he traveled to the Bahamas, Cuba, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and parts of South America. He never quite made it to the U.S., but his long due reports paved the way for future European journeys. In honor of his efforts, Columbus Day is now celebrated in America, Italy, and Spain. So here it is in a nutshell. The world flat, a storybook myth. The shortcut west, that was his. Italy said no. Spain said let's go. He had three ships. He kept great notes. Never discovered America, but he did find some great vacation spots. That's Christopher Columbus in 97. Hopefully some of that sounded familiar. I know it's a lot of it's repeated information from things I already said. Um, so let's look now at Spain. Spain actually is kind of the first one to reach North and South America. So they established the largest piece of territory. If you look at the map over here, everything that's in red would have been um, Spain's acquisitions in the New World. So um, they acquire territories in North Northern and Western South America, the Caribbean, Central America, and Southern and Western North America. Conquistadors is going to be a word on the word wall. You'll, be, um, you'll have to be familiar with that word. And really, it's just ruthless settlers who received riches from Spanish royalty in exchange for land. Some of the famous ones I have listed here, some of them you may remember from elementary school. Um, Cortez, he conquered the Aztec Indians. Pizarro conquered the Inca Indians. Ponce de Leon, you may um, have heard of living in Florida with the whole fountain of youth right here in um, Florida. De Soto um, explored the southern U.S. and the Mississippi River, and Coronado explored northern Mexico, which parts of it is still um, the western United States today. A couple things about the territories in Spain was that they set up plantation farming. They had big farms and grew lots of um, crops, including tobacco was a big um, way of making money for the Spanish in the New World. Um, they used conquered Native Americans as slaves. However, because Native Americans didn't have the immune system for European diseases, a lot of them died off, and the ones that didn't die off were often sick. A sick and dying slave is not a very productive slave, so it didn't work for them. So the Spanish were actually the first people that began to import African slaves to make up for the lack of Native American slaves. Slave labor becomes an essential part of life in the Spanish colonies, which the British actually emulate when they start establishing colonies later on. Okay, Portugal. Portugal's another country that um, really gets into the whole exploring the Americas. Prince Henry was the big Portuguese prince who decided that his people needed to have a stake in the new land as well. Their ships really spent lots of time exploring the east coast of Africa where they traded gold, ivory, and slaves. But really, once they learned to move west, the area that they ended up settling was the area that's currently Brazil. I tell kids a lot, too, they don't realize that um, 
you know, if you're from Brazil, you don't speak Spanish, you'll speak Portuguese. And it's really because the Portuguese settled that area and established colonies there um, a really long time ago in the, in the 1500s. Okay, France. France is the other country that really comes in and plays a major part in exploring the Americas. They have a different purpose though, whereas the Spanish and the Portuguese establish um, plantations and life there, the French do things a little bit differently. They really look at America as really just kind of a stepping stone, as a way to still continue to get to Asia. Um, so they look for this little thing called the Northwest Passage. They think there's a way to go through North America and continue on because they're still interested in getting to China and to India. So they look for this thing called the Northwest Passage, which will be another word on the word wall that you're going to be responsible for, um, in northern Canada in the St. Lawrence River. What they do after they don't find this Northwest Passage, because it doesn't really exist, um, they set up military and trading posts in North America. They're more interested in making money than they are building this huge, strong empire. Something else we'll talk more about later is that they actually become friends with the Native Americans. They're not, they're not enslaving them, right? They try to use them for their own uh, money-making purposes, trade with them, things like that. They also used the territory for lots of lumber and furs. Um, beaver skin was a big um, commodity back then, and in Europe they had been hunted to extinction, but in America there were still lots of them. So the French really capitalized on um, trapping and using the furs of beaver to make a ton of money. Okay, so let's look again um, at this map here. Um, the French, really, like we said, they don't realize that North America is about 3,000 miles wide. They think there's a way that somehow, right, they can get down the St. Lawrence River and through the Great Lakes, and it's got to connect to over here. But really, what obviously we know now is that it doesn't. So really, there's no, way, there's no way to do that. But the good thing is that the French established all kinds of areas up here in um, Canada, which is really why today they still speak um, French in certain parts of, of Canada. OK, and just something to think about. We won't really go through this right now. But what are really some of the main differences between um, Spain and France and the New World? And in what ways are they similar? We'll revisit this um, in class. And once again, we're going to talk a little bit about Great Britain, but like I said before, stay tuned because um, we'll get to that um, in, a, in another week or so. And this really is what the map looks like um, for North and South America. The green here is Spanish territory, the orange here is Portuguese, the French is this blue area here. Yeah, there's a little bit of Russian settlement here and there's some Dutch settlement here and there in the Caribbean. Um, the British is the red, um, so really this is kind of like, you know, how the pie was sliced up for all these different countries. And so real quick, which countries um, really established land in um, northern North America, the St. Lawrence River and the Great Lakes? That would be France. Okay, and then um, who established current, um, current day Brazil? Portugal, who really occupied most of South America, Central America, and the Caribbean, that would have been Spain. Think of it as, you know, this is the area where people still largely speak Spanish today. And which country really settled that little piece of land that I said we talk about later in North America? That is Great Britain. All right, that's it for the set of notes. Make sure you filled out a reflection.